Okay, going live. Okay, hello everyone. So, uh, welcome back on uh, Sanjay Gupta Tech School. So, as you all know, uh, last year we started a bootcamp on AI associate certification. So, uh, we just want you to prepare for uh, AI associate certification. So, uh, last year, like we did uh, two sessions on two different topics, and uh, this year we have restarted this bootcamp. And uh, uh, like this month and next month, all the sessions we will be conducting so that you can learn everything about associate AI uh, so that you can clear that certification, right? So I have Nikita with me. So welcome Nikita on the channel. And uh, she will be, Hello, sir. yeah, she will be delivering uh, uh, like one, one more topic today that is neural network. And uh, before starting that, uh, she will be giving you a quick recap what we uh, did in the day one and day two session right so uh, over to you nikita so just just uh, do a quick recap so that we can connect those uh, previous sessions and then just start the session over to you sure thank you so much sir okay um so we are here back again on the third session of artificial intelligence uh, program which is uh, strictly on uh, you know on the grounds of ai associate program that uh, salesforce has offered so here we started discussing about some uh, points which we which are called supervised learning unsupervised learning and then i've also taught you about uh, some things called classification regression and clustering so let's have a quick recap of these three things so first of all, I had taught you about supervised learning. Supervised learning means when you have got labeling in the output. There are two things, input and output. And when you have labeled data in the output, that's called supervised learning. That means you are letting the machine know about the output. And that's how the machine is, you know, having the work done. However, in clustering, in the unsupervised learning, what happens was, I had given you an example. In that example, we uh, we had mentioned that there are people who are, you know, who are the buyers, who are the frequent buyers, and we, as uh, the company, were giving credit cards to only those buyers who were very good in their civil score, who were very good at their loan repayment. So, you know, this is how the machine was clustering all the buyers and the machine was doing all this work all by itself. So that's how the algorithms of machine learning were working, right? So two things were regression and classification. In classification, we had labels where I told you that, you know, if a student is passed or a student is failed, that is based on the, uh, you know, percentage criteria. So these two labels, we granted them pass or fail. So we classified students in the pass category or fail category. Similarly, in regression supervised learning, we uh, had given an example where uh, salary was discussed and there were people who had some salaries uh, in some pointers. So when numerical data is the output and there is a lot of numerical data that is the output, we categorize it into the regression algorithms in the regression part of the supervised learning. So these were the three sections that we had a good discussion about. Then we went on to, you know, uh, having a classification of regression also in simple linear regression, multiple linear regression, polynomial regression. But as Sir already mentioned that, you know, we are strictly onto the path of AI associate program. However, all these things with the mathematics will be discussed in the coming up syllabus and course that we would launch of data science and artificial intelligence, where you will be learning statistics, mathematics all around for linear regression, multiple regression and polynomial regression. So all the math will be discussed. Here the math is not discussed because in associate program, there is not too much of mathematics that is going to be there. So hence we paused at this particular, uh, you know, thing and we thought that we will initiate a different program for it which will be around more than six months to eight months where you will be delving into uh you know delving into the uh, mathematics then you will be also going through the python language because one of the prominent language that we are going to use 
for the execution of different uh, you know uh, different different algorithms would be python only so first there'll be maths python and then you will be uh, you know uh, accustomed to the different uh, algorithms that we are going to discuss meanwhile what you can do is we have a group on linkedin and there is where i have put lot of mathematics about these regression uh, algorithms and you know you can just have a look if you are interested in uh, learning the math behind the things otherwise if you are only looking for an associate program then definitely you can just skip the math as of now right but it would be better that you do a holistic development rather than just a pinpoint development right then i discussed about simple linear regression and i had taught you about that there is a regression the line of regression that is on that path where which is the most or you know you can say that the least error fied path and this is how a line of regression on the scatter plot looks like so we plotted data points and a line of regression was plotted we different we found out the different least square errors and then we minimize them and wherever the errors were minimized this is the line of regression that we found on the y axis it was dependent variable because uh, these were only for the linear regression so linear equations was executed similarly as you can see in the right hand side these the connections between the dots and the lines show that these are the uh, this is the difference between the the point that you got and the point that is predicted so output that is predicted it has it's a different it's different from the output that you've got so this generates a little error and wherever it is less there is the line of ex, uh, regression which is executed so then we went on to a little of, little bit of theoretical uh, you know aspect of simple linear regression however in the associate program there's not a glance of uh, uh, this uh, linear regression you just have to have a simple idea about it so you can just you know read a little bit and then go for this program yes just just, okay. just to add, now this uh, yes, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt just to add one thing like uh, guys if you want to understand this uh, simple linear regression so you can watch the previous uh, session that we conducted like day 2 so uh, there nikita already explained everything about the simple linear regression so you can go through that so that you will be having all the information okay go ahead so today we had for you was a uh, difference between the hand coded uh, algorithm and train models so we already had a discussion about uh, these uh, theoretical parts where i told you there's a difference between automation and a trained model automation depends on how we control a computer we control an algorithm or we design something for a computer that this is the work that has to be done and automated that's called the hand coded algorithms however what trained models would do is we would just give them the data and they would be trained on that data and then they will have a uh, execution of you know whether or not uh, the task is to be performed so this will be a quick quicker way of uh, execution and you can see that you know the train models what all they can do is uh, you know they can learn patterns they can have relationship from the data so they can derive a lot of things from the data that you provide all you need to give them is just the data set and they will the models will be capable enough to e execute the things then you have got that the choice between these approaches depend on the factors such as the nature of the task of course we are going to uh, not everything can be trained so there are restrictions in that part as of now because ai is not fully developed so there are uh, little consequences and you know things that we have to keep in mind then you have the availability of data and the need for interpretability of course if the data is not available you cannot train your machine or your model if you know if you have lack of data because for small data the machine would not work as good as for the large data sets hence it is uh, it is you know it is um, advised that you should always have a large data set for your models to be known and we'll have a look at number of uh, data sets that you know we are going to discuss in the future then you have the need of interpretability and the level of expertise required for the algor algorithm design 
Now, everybody can not design the algorithm. You need to be specific enough to have a, a derivable relationship between the uh, data and the um, execution of it, and hence the results. So, there are a lot of things that have to be kept in mind when you are training the model. And that's the difference between, you know, when you hand, hand code the algorithm, that means you are controlling the machine. Here, you are making the machine self dependent to think of itself and the the you know the integral part that the machine is going to use is what we are going to learn today that is deep learning and a part of it that is neural network so we can you know interchangeably or intermixingly we can use these two terms called neural networks and deep learning so let's see what is there in the neural networks today So uh, this is a previous slide that I had discussed about. We we do we did a glance discussion about the AI and ML. However, I did not delve into the deep learning because of obvious reasons that we had to discuss that in a later stage. So today we'll look at the we'll look at the orange section where deep learning as a subfield of machine learning will be discussed. So um, this deep learning is based on the first thing which is neural network and the first neural network that was coined was. Perceptron that we will have a look at. So deep learning is a subfield of machine learning that uses artificial neural networks with multiple layers to model and process a complex data and enabling the breakthroughs in the task like image and speech recognition. So we are here to obviously make uh, our things or you know the the world a better place. To be uh, there. So what happened was there was a case where uh, where an image was there, but was too distorted, and an image that had too many lines, too many uh, segmentations, and it was like uh, uh, an image which had uh, no pixels left, no to very less pixels left to be cleared up, right? So it is just because of this learning and advancement in the neural networks theory that we got to know. That that image could be, uh, you know, taken out, and you know, you can have a great picture of the past. So whenever, like previously, it was obviously not uh, advisable or it was not very uh, handy for us. But now, if you have any previous pictures which are totally distorted, what you can do is just, uh, you know, get to the, the study of neural networks and machine learning, and of course, they are going to do the task. So this. The, the things have become very easy. There are various applications that have been used in past uh, to, uh, you know, take out uh, these images which were totally distorted, and today they are of humongous one. So AI hence is a very hyped up term and uh, should be in the near future. So for ten years, if you are getting into this stream, so nowhere, you know, the, the jobs are too many in the market. Let's see what neural networks have. So we started from the artificial intelligence. We went on to learning the machine, le the machine learning, and we uh, also had uh, executed some of the, uh, you know, supervised and unsupervised. So all of it was belonging to this zone of ML. Then today we are moving on to the neural networks, where we will study that what weights would do, what the biasing would do, what the summation of uh, uh, the, you know, the inputs and the weights when you multiply the inputs with the weights, what will those things do, right? So this is what the study would be. However, a very um, short study has been given in the link of Salesforce trial blazers. So we'll just, as I mentioned, we will just go in accordance with that as of now. So what are neural networks and why you might be interested in them? So neural networks, which were initially called artificial neural networks, but we dropped off the name uh, artificial for some reason. And now we are going on to uh, just with the neural networks thing. So neural networks are a type of machine learning, often combined with the deep learning. Now, why is it, why is it interchangeable is because neural networks we used to uh, have only two, three layers. But when we go beyond two, three layers, and there are a lot of hidden layers in between, round about 150. So at max, I mean, the 150 layers can be accommodated. And that's why, you know, deep learning went into, uh, as a coin term, 
because uh, there was a lot of data and lot of execution and if you will use a lot of hidden layers in the deep learning aspect so what will happen is you will have have a uh, have the outputs that will be more you know uh, which were which will be more execution uh, executable and uh, this sort of um, uh, feature engineering will happen in between the layers so in deep learning wherever you have many layers many hidden layers a lot of feature extraction will happen and hence the output would be likable mostly likable hence the small perceptron is of no use as of now but large networks combined and complex deep learning networks are of most usage as of now so defining the characteristic of a deep neural network is having two or more hidden layers and these hidden layers are ones that neural networks control so it's reasonably safe to say that most neural networks in use are a form of deep learning so here this is where the neural networks or the term neural has been derived from if if you know the basic terminology of biology the neuron and this was a class 6 class 7 thing that you know we were taught about ten rights then we had nucleus in between and then you have cell body axon axon is where the transmission of the information happens and then you have axon terminals that are there so this has been the inspiration point of a neural network and we have derived the neural networks from this particular aspect of biology so it's a very uh, basic term so what happens in the dendrites and the nucleus and then axon so it's not the exact thing that is happen happening in the neural networks however as i mentioned that the the biological term neuron has been the inspiration for the neural network networks so as <clears throat> things go ahead in this biological term called neuron what happens is the information is transferred and you know there are a lot of neurons in the human body and you require a, like too many neurons for you know the transfer of information in the human body so when you touch anything and that's hot so your your body sends the different signals to the mind that you know you have to perform a reflex right this is what we were taught when we were young in the science lessons um, however in this neural network same thing will happen that this x1 x2 x3 x4 these are all the inputs that you are going to have and then these lines are also having the weights that are in accordance with the inputs however there was a question in ai associate program that uh, you know the quiz question was there and uh, uh, they asked if your summation has got anything to do or biasing has got anything to do with the weights so no that was a false thing you don't have anything uh, the biasing has hasn't got any relationship with the uh, inputs and uh, the weights they are totally different and uh, these inputs are very much independent having their own weights and when you multiply you get the summation of the weights is here and then you have a biasing term over here then simply you have got uh, the uh, axon terminals just the way the axon terminals are here so this is how a neural network is formed this is a very initial level neural networks however we will study more complex neural networks in the data classes anything that you have any doubt about you can just you know put in the comment section below so we can just uh, answer the doubts so we have a final theory today about neural networks a neural networks hence is an adaptive system that learns by interconnecting nodes or neurons in a layered structure that resembles a human brain so human brain was a basic inspiration because when uh, as soon as a computer arrived computers arrived so scientists throughout the world were or you know in a in a or that you know how can we make the machines independent and uh, it since then they were just moving on and then you know they were uh, bringing out lot of things there have been lot of ai inventors also because when the ai had lot of uh, what what do we call investments and all but then in between there were uh, too many ai inventors that we witnessed and perhaps after 1950 to 19 like 2000 the 
work was pretty fluctuating after 2000 2005 you know this got a, a new rhythm and then after 2012 so you have seen that you know there there has been a totally different vibe of artificial intelligence neural networks ai so it can learn from data what neural networks neural networks can learn from data so it can be trained to recognize patterns classify data and forecast future events this is the most important thing that you know um, the forecast of the future events of course that's what we are interested in this is the most intriguing area of uh, human intelligence and computer intelligence if they meet together to generate uh, something to you know come up with uh, seeing the future and uh, predict the future in a very uh, precise and uh, confirmed way so a neural network breaks down the input into layers and these layers are then uh, you know you have got different uh, convolution neural networks and lot of other neural networks that are going to be there in the study so all in all this neural networks uh, what do they do is uh, whatever their input is that is they are broken down into layers and then you know we have uh, different different complexities related to them different different weights and that's how the story goes so it can be trained using many examples to recognize patterns in such um, in the speech or images just as the human brain does the neural network behavior is defined by the way its individual elements um, are connected and by the strength or weights of those connection so um, as i mentioned that individual perceptron is of no use we have to have multiple perceptrons or a very complex network of uh, neural networks that you know that are working in a day in day out you have got gpus what are gpus the graphical processing units uh, so you know you need to have these because you are going to work with the images and lot of data mostly today the uh the data that you are having is in the form of videos and images and some sort of label you are having some sort of unable data you are having so you will be an individual who will be providing these sort of information and then executing these algorithms based on um different different uh, aspects of uh, life so the last line that i would like to reiterate would be that you know it can be trained using many examples to recognize patterns patterns in what in images and speeches uh, as uh, as the things go and just as the human brain does the so the the horizon of all of this is to be exactly like a human brain just the way we were taught in uh, our childhood that you know this is an apple this is um, this is a uh, mango this is a banana so all these fruits nobody or like people were there to tell us that you know this is what an apple is called this is what a mango is called so the labeling was given to us and that's why our brain may be function faster however if they would give us um, apple most of the time and they would not tell us so we would be saying that you know let's cluster this sort of uh, um fruit in one section let's cluster mango mango sort of so you know whenever you get mango you get a cluster of mango that okay this sort of fruit is different so you you will yourself give the name to the you know section that you are clustering so same way we are expecting now that the machines and robots would do the work so um yeah i mean this is how the training would happen so the neural network behavior is defined by the way its individual elements are connected and by the strength or weight of these connections in the end what happens is you are going to add the input times the weight and uh, you will get into the different bias and then the function will run on and that's the mathematics that we do behind the scenes so here is what the first neural network perceptron looks like you can have the um, you can have this image where a single layer perceptron is shown over here you can see that there are a lot of inputs over here x1 x2 till xn you can take any variable of course and 
these have got different different weights w1 w2 w3 till wn and now if you are going to sum them up that is x1 times w1 x2 times w2 x3 times w3 xn times wn you can sum them up and then put it in the activation function and the output so here also what we are having is we'll have a predicted output and the output from our perceptron whatever the difference will be that will be the error now what am i going to change with respect to that the weights i'll go i'll go and change the weights until and unless i reach close to the predicted output until and unless the errors are reduced that's the stage where we will say that okay now the model is fine right so this is how our neural networks work let us have a quick recap of things that we discussed today we started off from uh, revising our uh, supervised and unsupervised and uh, these classification regression and clustering so we had a discussion about regression we had uh, we know that this is a part of uh, supervised learning and then you have got output as a continuous quantity as i mentioned that you know when your uh, when your uh, percentage is around about 70 to 72% in your uh, final year then you uh, you get some 42000 uh, per month as a salary then then you your percentage goes from 72 to 75 you will get a different salary which is let's say 45000 so you have got a continuous quantity in your output and this is what regression would look like there are a lot of numerical digits that are going to play into regression so main aim is to forecast or predict whatever you want to predict whether it can be a salary whether it can be anything that you have a numerical data output of so you can see that the predict predicting the output of the stock market price is one of the things or what you can do is the the output as a if you are a if you are a real estate person that you know who is dealing into the places so you know that in this area that your housing prices will be you know more than 2 crores 1 crore or 1.5 crores that that will be the cost of the houses so this is also a regression analysis and uh, the algorithm that we are going to use is linear regression similarly in classification we have supervised learning output is uh, categorical quantity as i mentioned yes no or, or days of the week if you have so monday tuesday wednesday or which day you are going to choose you have got seven outputs for it so you know this is category uh, then one aim is to um, compute the category of the data for example classify emails as spam or no spam so you are putting the data into or mails into either spam bin or no spam bin the if if it's no so no spam it is going to show up in your inbox if it is spam it is not going to show up directly in your inbox you have to check your spam box right and the algorithm that we are going to use over here will be logistic regression and finally you have got clustering so clustering may as i mentioned that you are going to um, this is one of the example that uh, you are a person and you are uh, delivering some credit cards and your distribution distribution will be based on how many number of people are you know paying the loan off paying it uh, very nicely and they are absolutely fine this is the score so you will be clustering those sort of buyers and calling them and you know giving them an out uh, any sort of discounts or any sort of uh, any sort of deals that you wish to so this is how clustering would work and similarly then you have got simple linear uh, multiple linear and one of the simple linear has been already explained in the videos ago that we did in the mathematical way so all of it you can just go through if you want me to reiterate the simple linear regression it is just like um, it is a way to figure out how one thing can predict or explain other another thing so imagine if you are trying to understand how the number of hours people study relates to their test scores and simple linear regression helps you find a straight line that shows the relationship between the two things right so <clears throat> in simple terms it answers like if someone studies for x number of hours they're likely to to, to do great in the test right so we can say that the output would be good if somebody is studying for longer hours the output will be worst if nobody is studying so it's either pass or fail so pass will be you know when you have studied for the longer hours and fail will be when you have not uh, we have you have studied for not even a bit <clears throat> this is how it works 
then we went on to see the deep learning and the neural networks so in the neural networks i believe you will have to just study this much for the uh, you know the program that you are looking for the ai associate program and you can just revisit this so that uh, you know you have a a complete tone of neural networks so neural networks are initially they were called artificial neural networks and they are a type of machine learning often combined with the deep learning the defining characteristics of deep neural network is having two or more hidden layers so as many layers as many feature extraction and as many feature extraction the stronger will be the output the more likable will be the output so <clears throat> it's reasonably safe to say that most neural networks in use are a form of deep learning only right and this is where i told you that neural the neural uh, network is derived from the human uh, body the brain cells the neuron of the uh, this is the biological term the neuron and this is where our inspiration for developing a neural network came from then we went on to studying even more into the uh, into a bit like a neural network is an adaptive system that learns by using interconnected nodes or neurons in a layered structure that resembles a human brain so as the brain studies this is what the target of the, the current world is that that's the way a machine should learn and hence we are improvising a lot of algorithms in those aspects so it can learn from data so it can be trained to recognize patterns classify data and forecast future events a neural network breaks into the uh, breaks the input into layers and that's how it works it can be trained using many examples to recognize patterns in speech or images just as the human brain does so this is what we did and the final the first neural network perceptron the next lecture will start from mathematics of perceptron so i'll put some details about perceptrons and how the math behind it works because i remember there is a form played in the neural network thing it's a long formula you won't have to learn anything about it neither will be it be there in any uh, any of the quizzes that you appear for it's just that i'll tell you a bit of maths behind it that is just to touch that you know you have done perceptron in a manner that it should have been done that's it but that will be not there the maths will not be there in the certificate questions so okay. i think this is it yeah. for the day yeah and, i think uh, you already covered everything you you very well revised whatever we have done uh, so far and uh, like you explained neural network also and uh, what i am thinking like uh, maybe in upcoming sessions we will try to relate uh, trailhead uh, modules with the topics which we are discussing so that uh people can go and uh, they can take those quizzes also right so we can guide them like this this trail head you can follow uh, along with this topic and just just prepare for the quizzes so that uh, like along with the theoretical knowledge and whatever mathematical information you will be sharing uh, based on that they can go through the quizzes and uh, they can prepare themselves for ai associate exam i think that will be the good idea correct 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 Okay. I think after this neural network questions would be pretty much doable. Yeah, or maybe like we can we can just share uh, those on the screen because they are publicly available, and we can guide them like if this is the question, so what can be the sure. uh, output? So we can ask uh, viewers like uh, what should be the answer, and this this way uh, our sessions can be more interactive. Yeah, so we'll we'll try to plan uh, upcoming sessions accordingly. Right. Okay, so okay. anything else that you want to add, or you are done? I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Okay. That's thank it you. for my side. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. So, guys, uh, next week we'll be having uh, two more sessions, right? So, uh, like uh, from now onwards, uh, every week you will be having few sessions, so that uh, if you are following all the videos, so uh, you will be able to prepare for uh, Salesforce AI Associate certification. Okay. so thank you for watching this video and uh, uh, like if you if you are uh, watching the recording so thanks for that also because i know uh, people uh, are following this <coughs> channel from different geographical location 
so if this time is not suitable for you so you can watch the recordings and anytime if you have uh, doubts so uh, you can reach out to us on linkedin so that uh, we can help you out okay and uh, like soon we'll be going to start uh, like in person training programs also so i will be sharing those details with you so that along with other admin and development programs you can start learning ai also <coughs> Okay, so thank you so much, and thank you, Nikita, for uh, sparing some time and sharing your knowledge. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. See you next week with new topic. Bye, everyone.